Hi, everybody. I'm back to do a reading. I have several questions here, so I'm going to ask. I have a whole bunch of questions here, but I can only, I only have time to do just a few. So I'm going to start with, um, I feel like the kind of the most important, the bones of it leading up to the other questions. And then tomorrow I'll be back with the second piece of all of these questions here that I have. So the first question I want to know from, from the universe, from source, from our highest versions of self, right? That which has our highest and greatest good for intentions only and always. Um, what I want to know is if the QFS system, if QFS, quantum financial system, is already up and running, and if it's running beside the old system. Now, I know that I've done readings in the past and that I've gotten that it is, but here it is. It's, uh, it's March 21st today, in the, the month that we call March and the year that we call 2023, right? So we're just going to peek in on that again and just see what we get uh, for a story. Only the truth is welcome here. Only the truth is welcome here. Only the truth is welcome here, right? Only love and truth. Uh, only that which has our highest and greatest good for intentions is even allowed to come in and help with us, right? Okay, so I've decreed it, so it is, right? So that's the first question I want to know. Is the quantum financial system already in place and up and running beside the old system? So that's the very first question. I'm going to give it another shuffle here. Let's see what we get. It's going strong, you guys. <laughs> All right, you guys, so listen closely. So I asked if the quantum financial system was up and running beside the old system, right? And I got, yes. Got an absolute yes. It's been running. It's been working. It's been working for quite some time now. And here's our yes, okay? So across from that, the old system. It's right on its last legs, you guys. So the quantum financial system has been in effect working alongside this old broken system for a long time. This old broken system's about to go down, okay? We know that. We see all the evidence of that. We're not stupid. We see the evidence of that. And then again, there is our yes, okay? So not only is it there beside the old system, it's been working in conjunction with this old system, yes, for a long time, because that's a lot of work going in, okay? So then what's, what's driving the entire reading is, you know, having to surrender to something new. This old system's dying, right? So this had to be a surrendering to there. And then, you know, something very strong coming in that's very healing. And that's what the QFS system is all about. It's very healing. It has humanity's highest and greatest good. And it has been, it has been working alongside this old one for a long time. And this old one, you know, we've got two ending cards here, you guys. So let's do a clarifying on um, this old system. This leads right into the next question. The next question, they wanted to know what it will look like when the stock market totally, totally crashes, right? The stock market is part of that old financial system, obviously. So, um, I don't like to take anything for granted when I'm looking at the cards. So, I'm not going to assume that the stock market will completely bottom out, right? I need to know first if that's going to happen before I can go on to that next question, okay? So, what I'm asking the universe right now is off of these two ending cards um, and this beaten up system, the old system, we know that the, that the stock market is part of that old system. So what I would like you to do now is to give me a story around the stock market 
and tell me, is the stock market going to completely end, um, completely crash? Will there be a complete crashing of that stock market? The uh, stock market's going to completely die and be rebirthed. So I don't even need to go any further there. Okay? Because I'm busy. <laughs> I got a big day. And uh, that, that totally answers that question. The stock market is going to die. Okay? So the QFS is up and running beside the old system and has been for quite some time. Uh, the old system is is really it's beaten up it's ending um bringing this new system in there had to be a surrendering to so there had to be a surrendering to just to bring this system in so it was beaten up way back when this got up and running it's just that you're seeing it more blatantly now right and this new system is strong it's very strong and it's very healing. So it has humanity's highest and greatest good for intentions. And then when I asked if the stock market was going to completely crash, uh, we got, yeah, the death card. So yeah, it's gonna, it's going to. So I'm going to shuffle these cards back in, you guys. And um, one of the other questions that they had was, should the, the um, stock market crash... What's that going to look like? In other words, so the universe, my guides, and, and source, and my highest version of self will understand what I'm asking here very clearly. In other words, when that stock market crashes, what is that going to look like for humanity? What's going to happen? Can you give us a story around whether or not that's going to be a smooth transition? So we've heard that there's going to be chaos. We've heard terrible stories, and we've heard not so terrible stories. We've heard stuff kind of in the middle. Um, so I want only the truth about what it's going to look like, the truth, about what it's going to look like here for humanity when that stock market crashes. Um, will chaos and, and riots and horrible things ensue? Or will it be smoother? So I realize I'm saying two things right now. But I'm letting them know that what I'm looking for is the story around the truth about what's going to happen. So that's I'm, I'm letting them know what it is that I'm looking to find out. And I'm just going to let them tell us a story around it. Give the cards another shuffle. And I'll cut them up. I won't cut them up, but I'll cut them. Okay, so I got a couple of threes popping up right off the bat, you guys. You guys, I'm not seeing any terrible cards in this, right? So give us a story around what it's going to look like um, when when the stock market crashes for us, for humanity, is it going to be chaotic? Is it going to be peaceful? There's nothing really saying heavy to one way or heavy to the other. So what happens when the stock market crashes? Well, people are going to learn about it. Communities are going to know about it. There's going to be enlightenment that happens. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. I can't see. There's going to be enlightenment that comes of this, right? So when the stock market crashes, communities are going to find out about it. It's going to affect the communities a little bit, but it's going to bring in a lot of enlightenment. So there's going to be information that we get that helps to enlighten us with this crash, right? Um, across from that, it's going to give us an opportunity to look out at new things. And um, they're going to bring us information straight on. So this is my Queen of Swords. 
See how straight her sword is. I always say they're going to give it to a straight, right? So we're going to be looking out at some new things and we're going to be getting it straight, you know? We're going to be hearing information. They're going to give it to us straight. Uh, what's driving this entire reading is is this, the crash of the stock market is it's a strategy. It's a war move, right? It's, it's kind of like a war move and it's karmic. So it's karmic. The energies of the elements and the world and the spirit and spirit world and just everything that you can imagine. This is karmic. It's got to happen and it's a strategy. Yes, we're going to see, you know, some people are going to be disappointed because you are going to lose some things, you guys. So let me just point that card out a little bit. All right. So, and remember, I'm not a financial advisor in any way, shape, or form. I'm a tarot reader. That's, you know, I'm just telling you what I'm seeing in the cards, right? So, you know, it's a strategy. It's like a war move, right? It's, it's a war move. And it's a good one because, look, it's, it's like... The crash happens and we get to look back. We're kind of winning and other people are walking away sad. So I imagine it's all part of taking down the nefarious system. It's all part of that, right? <clears throat> it's karmic. It's karmic. It has to happen. But yeah, people are going to lose some things. See, there are some things spelt here. So if you have money in the stock market and it crashes, you're going to lose the money. And you might get back a little bit, but probably not as much as you lost. So I don't know if you've got insurances or whatever. And I'm not a financial advisor. But I'm just telling you what's in the cards, okay, you guys? So if there's money in the stock market and it crashes, you're going to lose some. There's going to be some disappointments. You might get a little back. That's what it's showing, okay? So... Um... So that's kind of, that's the story about what it will look like if the stock market crashes. It's not giving us anything too dire. It's not like a dire straits, and it's not anything like, woohoo, you know, all of a sudden something wonderful happens and like, you know, makes life amazing. So it's just kind of, this is what it is, right? It's just, this is how it's going to be. So I'm going to... I'm going to uh, go off of that card and I'm going to say, all right, so off of these disappointments that we see, people losing some things, um, are we going to see ordinary people and, uh, you know, just your ordinary population, are we going to see the ordinary population suffer dearly with this crashing of the, the stock market and, and the falling of the banks? Are we going to see people suffering dearly during this time? Will we see suffering? I mean, people have already been suffering, you guys. But I'm asking if, like, if it's going to get really dire. Are we going to see, like, is it going to be dire straits? So I'm asking off of this five, the losses card. I want you to know that fives are chaos, but, you know, they're... They're a form of chaos that you can usually maneuver through pretty easily, right? So, let's see what the universe has to say about this. The magician. There's going to be a lot of different options. We keep getting this. Different things, right? New beginnings, we're going to be hyper-focused on a new world, a new beginning, new ways to do things. We're going to have a lot of different things to choose from, you guys. So there's going to be a lot of different choices, and we're going to be hyper-focused on that. And, you know, we're going to be hyper-focused on the abundance, clearly. It's going to be a lot of needless worry. The Wheel of Fortune's putting those bad guys on the bottom, you guys. This is something that has to happen. It's not, um, it's a wish fulfillment. So it's not giving me anything in this regard saying that there's going to be total chaos and hardships. Um, it's just going to be kind of one of these things that we deal with. Some people will lose some money. It does say that. It says pe there will be losses. So whoever, you know... Like, like I said, not a financial advisor, 
but it is saying that, you know, there's going to be some losses when the stock market crashes. And we're seeing the banks crash as well. So now let's take a look, because one of the other questions was, um, I don't know how much time I've got left. I'm 15 minutes in. Okay, so, uh, so a deep concern for a lot of people is when all of this starts to fall apart and really crumble, uh, are there going to be food shortages? Because people want to survive, right? You've got to eat to survive. So I'm asking the universe right now as we're looking at these, the, these questions that I've been asked, um, is there going to be a lot of hardship? I want you to know right now, though, I, I always feel the need to remind people this, there are a lot of people going hungry right now. There are people living in cardboard boxes and on the streets and in and out of homeless shelters and living out of their cars and um, rationing food already, and some of them not having any. So I guess what I want to say is for the people that have been working their butts off just to, you know, to get by to, you know, debt slaves, uh, enslaved to the system, that, are, you know, are fortunate enough to have homes and whatnot, um, places to live, food on their table. Um, are we going to see this terrible, you know, this terrible uh, food shortages where, like, more and more people will go hungry? Because, you know, we all know about the Hunger Games, right? We all know, kind of, we know what their plan was, right? We know that. So let's take a look in, into these food shortages, you guys. And get a story around that. Is that true? Is that something that we, we really need to be very concerned about? No, we're not going to have to be too concerned. Okay, so. All right. So we've got the King of Wands, okay? So that's passionate. He's a good leader. He's a good guy. The King of Wands is a good guy. Um, the Kings are good. The King of Cups, can, there can be, it depends on how he's set up. He can be a real slime ball or he can be a good healer, right? But the kings are generally good unless there's particular things um, lined up with them that would say otherwise. So the king of wands, he's passionate, and he leads with the highest and greatest good. Uh, he's a passionate, noble leader, okay, you guys? So representing the question, you know, are there going to be food shortages? I would say that people have already been, um, they've already gotten things ready should something crazy happen where there might be some food shortages in the midst of these financial endings. These are good endings. So you have leaders that this is a happy ending, right? So this is like you kind of want that to happen because it's the happy ending. Everybody's happy the, with, the, the, with this ending of the earthly pleasures. It's like the dog's happy, the children are happy, the grandparents are happy, the parents are happy. Like it's a happy ending. So... As we're talking about this, the endings of the, the banks and the, and the stock market and things to come and this QFS up running beside that old system and it's showing us that old system's dying and that the, the stock markets are going to crash. Um, are we going to have food shortages? I've got no cards here saying that we're going to be in dire straits at all. So this has been planned for. This has been planned for for a long time, apparently. We've got leaders that have been planning for this ending. This has been in the making for a long time. So, okay, and this is like good leadership, happy endings. Right beside the leadership, we have the sun card. So this, these endings um, that would make people worry about the sh food shortages, these are like happy endings. This is winning. This is gold. This is warmth. This is, this is um joy this is prosperity like this is the sun card so you know right beside the king we've got the sun so and right above him happy endings so this has been planned for this is not something to worry about okay across from him i don't know if you can see this 
So across from the King of Wands, we've got the ending cycle. So we keep seeing these endings, but right above, right above this ending of the journey, we have a bunch of prosperity, you guys. We have prosperity, and prosperity is all things. So it's food, it's wealth, it's love, it's clothes, it's shelter, it's joy, it's family, it's friends, it's animals, it's it's earthly pleasures, right? This is earthly pleasure, so anything that you deem of value, and this is in abundance. So, yeah, across from the king, king of wands, we do have an ending, but directly above it, we've got this highly abundant thing. So, yeah, we might be ending the journey, but we're beginning something where we're going to be much more abundant, okay? So then, across from the happy ending, we have the abundance card, right? So across from the happy ending, we have this like highly abundant, happy card. So we're being shown that these endings are going to bring upon quite the amount of detriment that maybe we've been hearing about. At least this is what Spirit's saying to me right now. It's what I'm getting, right? So then what's driving this entire reading is we have the King of Swords. So we've got a lot of information out there. We know a lot of things. And then you've got the Sun. So... We may be transitioning into a time where we're breaking this new ground, maybe growing our own food a little more, um, looking at things that are more local, more locally grown, instead of like me being able to go into a grocery store where I live and, and get exotic foods or whatever. You know, we're going to be looking at new ground. So maybe looking at making sure that these foods are um, fair trade and that you don't have two-year-old enslaved children out there friggin' harvesting them. Excuse my language. I get really pissed about this stuff, about the kids. It pisses me off what happens to them all over the world in many, many ways. Uh, so, many, so many different ways that our children are being abused. It makes me sick. So as we break this new ground, maybe we're going to look away from that and make sure that things are fair trade. Um, you know, only do business with, with places that... Uh, instead of dumping a ton of chemicals on our food that are growing it as clean as possible. So there's going to there's gonna be a way. There's nothing, there's nothing in these cards saying that um, things are going to get so bad, like the Hunger Games and, and starvation and things like that. And that's what I can consistently get, that we might change things. We might change things up some. We're going to be breaking some new grounds. We may be doing things different. But I never see that it's going to be like detrimental. Okay. So now one of the other things that they asked, I'm trying to get as much in as I possibly can. It's 23 minutes in. So this is going to have to be really quick, you guys. One of the other things that they asked, so they were told, um, uh, Dave Maloney, I think is his name, uh, went on and did a video with Nicholas Benyamin. And they were talking about how with these bank failures and the crashing of the stock market, that um, there is this nefarious plan to offer people that have lost, and I'm simplifying this a lot because I'm simplifying this a lot, okay? When you go cluttering things up with the tarot, you can, you can get um, chaotic cards that don't make any sense. So, I, I want to make sure that I get this question right so that it, it, it's very uh, solidified. So, they were talking about how when all of this stuff happens and people lose their money and it can't be backed up because there's no money, um, that there will be an offer made by the government in the form of digital currency but that you'll only be able to have so much, just so much. It's only allowing, it's like a capped amount. And then this, this money will actually be controlled by the government. So this money would be, you would be told what you could and couldn't buy with it. And it would just be another means of like gaining control of the people. So we know what side of the coin that would be, right? That would be the nefarious, luciferian, uh, one world order, 
agenda to gain control of the populace in that way. So what I want to know today is, is that a plan that is in place that can happen that people could fall for? So I want to know if that's something that could happen that's real, and is it something that they plan on implementing? Um, and we'll see what the universe has to say to that. So is that a real plan that they plan on implementing? Everything that I just said to you. All right. Let's see. There's another three in the world. All right, you guys, listen. We've been told there are, we have been told that we will have options, that we need to be very discerning. So what about that option sounds good to you? Does anything about that option sound good to you guys? Because it doesn't to me. <laughs> it doesn't to me, right? Um, to have that much control over what I'm doing with the money that should be rightfully mine anyways, right? So I'm getting, I'm getting, representing the question, that there are things that we will be looking out at and some of those things will be nefarious, okay? You'll have dark options and you'll have light options. We have been told consistently we're going to have to use our discernment. We're going to have to be very discerning for a little bit, okay? So as we're looking out, we're going to have different options. Some will be dark, some will be light. We're going to have to be discerning, okay? So across from looking out, we got the world. So, I mean, I think one time we get the magician. When you've got this, you've got a lot of different things behind it. So there's going to be a lot of different options. So I would say, again, I'm not a financial advisor, but I would say do the things that seem the safest. And when you're dealing with a digital currency that the government could control, and they're telling you that you get you only get this much and there's a cap, but there's conditions around it. You know, use your discernment. There's going to be a lot of different options going on, apparently. Okay? What's driving this reading is there are good things, good intentions, uh, things that will be beneficial to humanity. I mean, like I said, this represents gold. So think about God's money. God's money is silver and gold, right? And, you know, there's been a lot of work that's gone into good systems, a lot of work going into good and noble systems. Okay, you guys? All right. So then as you've got the above, above looking at new things, right? Going to read this across. You get the above the looking at new things. You have this high priestess. Like I said, good things and bad things that you could be looking at. There's been a lot of work that's gone into both arenas, okay? These things have been in the works for a long time and being worked against for a long time, right? So there's been a lot of work that's gone into both these arenas. There's been a lot of disappointments that have gone into these arenas. So I don't think you're going to have as many bad options as you do good ones because the bad options aren't driving the reading. So what I'm going to say is, off of these disappointments, are there fewer uh, options that will be available that would actually be to um, people's detriment than... Um, and options that would be to the betterment. 29 minutes in here. So that's what I want to know. 
<clears throat> are there fewer plans um, out there for people's detriment than for their betterment? So you get the Communities card. I wish I could get the Communities card. And Hold Ups. And Have Faith. So when I ask if there are fewer uh, detrimental plans, I got, there was, they had a lot probably planned. Good, good few for the community. But a lot of stuff has been tied up on them. So come, come unable to come to pass, okay, you guys? And so have a little faith. It's not going to be as bad as we think. Happy endings for everybody eventually. I think some people are going to have to make bad choices just to learn. Because just as we're seeing all this stuff unfold, not everybody's awake yet. And so some people might, that might be their choice to become enlightened, you guys. Sometimes that happens. So we've got happy endings for all in the end. But there are going to be some not so great things to choose from. So I'm just going to show, I'm going to shuffle these all in real quick. And I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to ask for the people that are awake and aware, will the options be pretty obvious? So and then I've got to get off here. So for the people that are awake and aware and kind of paying attention to what's going on in the universe and haven't really trusted the government or the, or any of their mandates or any of the BS that they're pulling and that know about all the nefarious schemes and the Hunger Games and, you know, trying to put us into smart cities and all of these horrible little plans that they had for us. Um, we know so much. There's so much that we know about how awful these people are. So I want to know, for all of us that are awake and aware, um, as we're having all of these options, like we've seen with the world and the, and the magician in the past, Will these options be pretty obvious to us? Will we be able to look at them? Will it be like blatant and outright? That this is a nefarious plan or this is a good, good plan? Will it be obvious? Or is it going to be tricky, you know? Like, will it be hard to decipher or easy to decipher? I want to know that. Judgment. There's going to be a lot of information that's good information around this, you guys. So what's driving the whole, inf uh, the whole reading is that there will be a lot of information with each thing that you could choose. And it's going to be good information, like, you know, little celebratory bits of information where you're going to say, oh, obviously, this is what I want to do, or obviously, this isn't what I want to do. And, you know, you're going to be able to make really good strategic moves, okay? So you're going to make really good strategic moves. There's going to be enough judgment out there because judgment is coming and we keep seeing that, right? There's going to be enough judgment out there so that anything that's, anything that's not good, anything that needs to come to pass, you're going to know about it. So you're going to have the information. The judgment's going to tell you what is an unworthy journey, what's a dead journey. There's going to be enough information Lots of information coming out. You're going to be able to make good strategies. The information that you're going to be getting is, is going to be good information. So strategically, you're going to be able to decide very well. There's been a lot of work that's gone into this. And uh, they're just waiting for that last little bit to bloom before this new stuff can come through, right? So... Then, you know, if I wanted to read this across, so a journey is ending. It's a good strategy that it does so that we can look out at the new. There's been so much work that's gone into this. You know, it's celebratory. Judgment is going to rain down and we're going to know so much. We're going to know so much.
So if that, um, and I've got to get off here. I'm 35 minutes in. <laughs> but anyways, the intentions were set. So lots of healing intentions set. I hope that you guys enjoyed enjoyed this uh, reading. Oh gosh, one more thing. Um, before I get off, I've got to shuffle one more time. It's going to take forever for this to go up, probably. I'm going to wish it, I'm going to wish it into being that it doesn't. Um, so all of the healing intentions have been set, okay? And um, all you have to do is stand in your power and decree all of that healing for yourself, for your highest and greatest good, only and always. So uh, I always set the healing intentions, you guys. Um and so the one more thing I wanted to look at, yesterday I looked at the Trump stuff, right? The arrest, and someone had commented, they just don't get it. Why would, why would they do this type of stuff, like the good guys? Why would they do this? And I said, I commented back and I said, geez, I, I just assumed the way those cards came out and the way it felt to me. When it said that Trump was safe, that yes, this was an optical thing, and that Trump had been moved to safety, uh, and that this was going to bring upon like a, um, enlightenment for everybody to see how crooked these systems were. I just assumed that it was the dark uh, the dark hats going after Trump, and because if it wasn't, why would he need to be moved to safety? Is how my mind went right, and if it's optics, it's to get our minds off from things that are happening. And we know there's a lot of things happening that the deep state doesn't want us looking at. And that's why we've seen so many, um, we saw the false flags a couple weeks back or a few weeks back. Um, we've seen the banks crash and we've got, um, you know, stuff going on with Epstein and Epstein Island and um, the Biden, the Hunter Biden laptop and, you know, the BID and crime family and... Um, you know, all of this stuff is hitting main, mainstream media, you guys. So if it's optics, I figured it would be the, da the dark hats doing this, pushing this, moves of desperation, right? Desperate moves to keep our eyes off from some things that are seriously important. We've had, you know, the J6 stuff coming out. Uh, there's all this stuff that's really important that people focus on. So keep us distracted, give us a circus so that we're not paying attention to the stuff that matters. So to me, that automatically feels dark hat agenda. And it feels like moves of desperation and it feels like they're gonna chew off their own nose to spite their face and that Trump was moved to safety because it is like a dark hat operation. But I didn't ask, <laughs> I didn't clarify on that. So, um, because that's that's how I felt. That's how I felt intuitively, and that's how I read the cards, and that's just what I felt. So I didn't ask because I didn't have a lot of time. I was really pushing it yesterday. So today I'm going to ask if the optics of the Trump arrest is a dark hat, if it's the dark hats pushing for that to keep us all distracted from all the other stuff that's happening that they don't want us to be looking at, knowing, and educating ourselves about. We're talking about, we're having the normies talk about, let the normies talk about the big Trump arrest, right? Instead of the other things. That's how I took it. So let's see, is it a dark hat, is it dark hat optics to keep the normies and, you know, people from seeing all of these really important things that are coming out right now? Is that Trump arrest a dark hat optic? Yeah. We got the King of Cups when we're talking about the black hats. Yeah, it's a strategy. It's a big strategy for them, you guys. They want us hyper focused on this, talking about this, sharing that with everybody, the Trump arrest. You know, also, if people talk about it all the time, you know, they can manifest for them. The, the dark hats love that, right? Right? Just got a yes, as I'm saying that. There's no coincidence, right? So they want us hyper-focused on it. They want us talking about it. They want all that information out there, helping to bring it into being. They're trying to get out from underneath. They're in trouble and they know it. 
And then right above the strategy, you know, the judgment. They're doing anything they can to try to get themselves out of this judgment and focus it on someone else, okay? So, yeah, the King of Cups comes up as a slime ball because we're talking about the black hats. We got a yes, you know, we got that they're trying to do anything that they can to get out from on, underneath that bottom, right? They're working it, working it, working it, doing whatever they can. And we know that they, and think of this, okay? So you look at this, this is the Wheel of Fortune. Think of how they operate, right? They operate according to, I mean, we can all do that too. We can use all of the same things that they do and use it with the light, right? But they're looking for certain dates. They want to confuse us. They want to keep us, they want to keep us focused on things so that we don't know the truth about stuff. They're trying to get out from underneath the bottom. They're on the bottom right now, you guys. And they'll do anything they can to try to Make the Wheel of Fortune go back around so they're back up on top. Okay. It's a good strategy. They're just trying to rain down judgment. But the fact is, it's going to rain down on them. It is raining down on them and they know it. So, this is a strategic move for them. <clears throat> okay. So, yeah, they want us all hyper-focused on it. They want us sharing it, talking about it and amongst each other and, you know, giving, paying it a lot of attention. <clears throat> so they can bring it back into being. And of course, you know, this represents two things because I asked, is this a dark hat agenda? And I got a yes. But yesterday we got that, uh, that he's been moved into safety. So we don't have to worry about it. He's been moved. He's safe. Okay. And I think he's been expecting them to do this to him for a long time. I mean, these, this is like, it's a battle back and forth, right? It's a battle back and forth between the good guys and the bad guys. It is what it is. So I'm 42 minutes in and I'm going to get off here because I've got a really busy day. But I hope that you all found some value in these readings. Um, go ahead and like, share, comment, subscribe. It helps me beat the algorithm if you did find a little value in it. Um, anyways, yeah, until next time, the healing intentions are, <clears throat> are all set. And... <clears throat> I've been having to talk a lot lately. Oh. The healing intentions are all set. And all you have to do is accept them for only your highest and greatest good. And know that I'm just wishing you all so much love and so many blessings and prosperity and abundance and joy and happiness and just all the things that life has to offer that are beautiful. And yeah, we'll see what happens, but... A lot of the nefarious plans that they had as far as the money systems go weren't able to go through. So we might see we might see some, but it's going to be obvious to us because there's going to be so much information. We'll be able to make good, clear decisions, you guys. That's what I'm getting anyways. So I hope that this was helpful and I will see you all next time. Until then, many, many blessings and much, much love from me to all of you. Take care.